I really like pipe organs. They're grand and magnificent, and have been used in lots of different ways to make really impressive and inspiring music. Not only that, but organs have the biggest dynamic and tonal range of any instrument, meaning one moment they can have this incredible, commanding presence, and the next they can be delicate and pretty. A lot of my favorite organ music originated from video games, so in line with my previous video, Pianos and Video Games, I wanted to take a look at how the instrument has been utilized in the medium. When you look at how pipe organs have been used in video game soundtracks, there are some clear patterns that emerge. For one, perhaps the most obvious, organs are used to represent churches and cathedrals. The pipe organ has over a thousand years of history with the church, going back as early as the 10th century, so it was an integral part of early Christian music. It's safe to say that whenever there's a cathedral in a game, you're gonna hear a pipe organ. I like the one in Fire Emblem Three Houses, which features vocals mixed to sound like they're coming from inside the building. It helps lend credence to the choir practice activity you take part in inside. And because organs are so closely linked with cathedrals, they're a mainstay of wedding music, like in this scene in Dragon Quest V, or during Bowser's wedding in Super Mario Odyssey. Even in Breath of the Wild, where a wedding is held outdoors, there's still organ music because the trope prevails. Organs are also frequently used in places that aren't cathedrals. In Katamari Damacy, the arrival of the king is proclaimed with a loud organ that emphasizes his regalness. In Greece, a desert sandstorm is represented by an organ that only plays while the wind is blowing. The area themes in Final Fantasy XIV's Heavensward expansion feature some beautiful pipe organ. Some of my favorites are the themes for the city of Ishgard, the Turning Mists, Aziz La, which features some dense cluster chords and muddy dissonance in a strange but cool way. If you look at an organ console, you'll see a myriad of knobs on either side. These are called stops, and they directly control the sound of the instrument by turning off and on different ranks of pipes. If you've ever wondered why it seems there's so many different ways an organ can sound, this is the reason. The stops are split up into sections called divisions, which each sound distinct due to their pipes having different shapes and designs. You can mix and match these divisions in countless ways to create a unique sound for a piece, and even change it up mid-performance. Even though pipe organs are capable of sounding so different, the vast majority of video game pieces stick to just one register, the Great Division. It's super bright, very loud, and just by listening to it you'll realize how it's the most popular choice by far.
I don't think there should be one catch-all organ sound, because organs have dozens of different registers and it'd be nice to hear some more variety. Thankfully, there are pieces to be found that break the mold and offer an organ sound different from the classic Great Division stuff that's a little overplayed. Here are some of my favorite examples. Of course, one of the most popular organ cliches is that they're used to communicate the great and spectacular power of your enemies. Final bosses, which are typically the most powerful and ultimate versions of enemies, love using pipe organs in their themes. These compositions are usually very imposing, sinister, and dark, using dissonant chords largely inspired by works by Johann Sebastian Bach, aka the guy who wrote Toccata and Fugue in D minor. A lot of pieces try their hardest to imitate Bach's signature style. Some of them are composed quite well, but my favorite organ pieces are the ones that don't try so hard to sound like Bach and just enjoy being their own thing. Pieces like Dark Messenger from Final Fantasy IX with its cool stomps and claps. Breath of the Wild's Calamity Ganon appears, whose clashing organ notes are a callback to Ganondorf's signature motif. This Kirby piece that uses dissonance in a way that I find beautiful, but 400 years ago Bach wouldn't have found agreeable. And Resonance of Fate's Basilica theme, which has an awesome climactic moment including a choir. There's even some pieces that mess with the organ sound itself, pitching it up or down or even reversing it. In addition to seeing how instruments get used in video game soundtracks, I also love to see how they appear physically in games as a gameplay element or even just decoration. Ganondorf's pipe organ in Ocarina of Time comes to mind as one of the more famous video game organs, as he's seen playing it once you reach him on your way to rescue Zelda. What's more, his organ theme had been playing throughout your ascension of his tower, and it's only once you open the door to his chamber do you find out that it was being played in-universe, and by the villain you were pursuing no less. But Ganondorf is far from the only organist villain. Games like Suikoden, The Messenger, and Tales of the Abyss all feature organ playing baddies too. And I think it's cool when they get to do that thing where they end on a big dissonant chord before saying something menacing and then get up to fight you. In the church in Banjo-Kazooie, a disembodied hand named Motsand plays a giant organ that Banjo needs to play alongside him to win a jiggy. Since you're able to climb all over it, you can find a bunch of details, like these pedals on the ground, and sheet music above the keyboard which is an accurately notated score of the area theme. Checks out. In Medieval, a phantom organist doomed to forever play one gloomy piece for the rest of his days begs you to find him some new material. 
Once giving it to him, playing it frees him of his curse and he's able to pass on to the afterlife. In Ace Attorney, Phoenix Wright investigates the chief of police, Damon Gant, who owns and houses an entire pipe organ in his office. Phoenix comments on how having an organ is an enormous waste of taxpayer money, which I think is funny. Guitaru Man has one of the most unique conclusions by far, where you need to battle an organist and his entire cathedral in a rock battle. And the oldest video game organ I found, which could possibly be the first interactive organ in the game, comes from 1988's King's Quest IV, The Perils of Rosella. At one point in this point-and-click adventure game, the player finds some hidden sheet music and needs to bring it to this pipe organ in order to perform it. Upon doing so, a hidden compartment opens in the organ, revealing a key needed to progress. Pipe organs have the largest tonal range of any instrument, being able to play notes much lower and higher than the piano. Where a piano tops out at a C8, around 4200 Hz, some organs are capable of playing up to a G9 at around 12500 Hz, an octave and a fifth above the piano. The piano's lowest note is an A0, but the biggest pipe organs in the world can play the C two octaves below this. Not just C0, but C-1. Only two pipe organs in the world are massive enough to be able to house the 64-foot pipes needed to create such a low frequency. At around 8 hertz, the note is so deep that it's felt more than heard, but it's still audible due to its overtones. People say they can feel the entire building rumble like during an earthquake when notes this deep get played, and I'd love to experience it in person. However, most video game organ pieces don't use low notes like you would hear in real life. With many digital organs, deep bass notes are not often very loud or commanding, with a soft timbre and volume relative to the high notes. In real life recordings, organ bass can be massive, at times close to overwhelming the microphones recording it. While I knew there wouldn't be any notes as deep as a C-1 used in video game music, I was still curious to know what the deepest notes I could find were. After combing through a few hundred pieces during the research phase of this video, and yes, that took a couple weeks, here were the lowest notes I found. Oh yeah, and since I'm sure people are interested, let me show you the highest note too. I actually found a piece that uses a G9, the highest note playable on real life organs, which sounds like this isolated. Listen for it at the end of this track.
Alright, time for a change of pace. I've been making this video all about the pipe organ, but electric organs are organs too, so it would be cool to take a look at how they're used in video game soundtracks as well. First introduced in the early 1900s, the electric organ was created to fulfill all the needs of a pipe organ while at a huge fraction of the cost and size. To approximate the effect of different registers and stops, a series of drawbars were included that added and removed overtones, and rotating speakers could spin at different speeds in order to create vibrato. The electric organ soon became an integral and iconic sound in gospel music and jazz, and later rock and roll and funk. Persona 5 makes good use of the electric organ in its jazz soundtrack. Star Ocean 3 uses it for some excellent funk. And Resonance of Fate features electric organ to great effect in its rock tracks. The electric organ is all over Mother 3, which takes a different approach with the instrument altogether. Here it's just kind of wherever the composer wanted it to be. In some trivial combat. A train ride. The final boss battle. and my favorite use as an emotional tool. To sum it up, I think video game music that uses organs is really cool. Organs can be used to create really powerful and stirring music, and it's fantastic hearing new pieces that use the instrument in a compelling and beautiful way. I look forward to more of that in video games to come. It's been a super long time since I last uploaded to this channel, so a big thank you to all my subscribers for your patience. The truth is that I haven't stopped being creative while I was absent. I started work on the second season of my show High Score, have several brand new projects already underway, and even recently launched a comedy channel called Verticris, which you can check out if you care to in the wait for more music content. I hope to get this stuff out soon, and I thank you again for your patience. As for the Instruments in Video Games series, I already have some great episode ideas planned for the future, so look forward to them. Thank you very much for watching, until next time.